Assalamu alaikum everybody, giving this a try again. <laughs> it started a few minutes ago and I just um, dropped out. So let me know if you can hear me. Say salams. Say salams in the comments. And inshallah today we will be starting our Prophet series. So please say salams in the comments. Let me share this. Say salams in the comments. Get your good deeds, inshallah, for just for saying salams, right? Story of Prophet Adam alayhi salam is what we are going to, inshallah, reflect on together today. So, if you have kids, grab them. <laughs> All those, uh, inshallah, we'll reflect on it together. But before I start... I want to get some salams. <laughs> I want to increase our good deeds, inshallah, right? So, please say salams in the comments. Please say salams in the comments. Please say salams in the comments. Remember, every time we say salams, we get 10 good deeds. We say, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah, 20 good deeds. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu, 30 good deeds. <laughs> and inshallah, you will be saying salams to many people here. So you are going to get much more good deeds, isn't it? So please do say salams in the comments. And let's spread a lot of salams around. This is the, well, first day of Ramadan, I hope for some of you. And uh, for us, it's the second night of Ramadan now in Australia. Alhamdulillah, easy first fast. <laughs> Super easy. Wa alaikum as um, Abdul Qadir. Let's see. Who else is going to say salams? <laughs> say salams in the comments and inshallah we'll begin. Story of Adam alayhi salam. Who is your favorite prophet? Of course, apart from Prophet Muhammad. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. My favorite prophet, the one I love the most, or I feel most inspired by, I'll tell you later. <laughs> okay, in the meanwhile, please say salams in the comments as you're joining in. Um, and we'll start shortly, inshallah, once a few more people join in. Say salams in the comments. And inshallah, we will begin. Let's say maybe in 90 seconds. Inshallah. So say salams in the comments as you're starting. Okay, I see Danielle. Wa alaikum as salam. <laughs> I, I realize it's not like not showing me everybody's salams. When I look on Facebook, it shows me more. I mean, on my desktop, which is in front of me. <laughs> so my eyes are over there. Um, <clears throat> how has your first fast been? Or is going? Because some of you just starting the day, isn't it? In Australia, we have easy fast, alhamdulillah. We finish around like, what time do we finish? Right, 5 30? Wa alaikum as salam, this is Asma. Welcome back. <laughs> I see Sister Asma salam so often. May Allah reward you for all your salams. Okay, so we are going to talk about. Our father today. And this is a special Facebook Live for children. So if I'm talking <laughs> a bit differently, it's because I'm talking to kids. Don't know if you can read that. My terrible handwriting. Adam and Islam. <laughs> I will probably have to write it like the other way around. <laughs> I 
Yes, Ramadan Mubarak to everybody. Okay, let's begin. Wa alaikum as salam, Sister Shahnaz. How is your fasting going? And who's missing Tarawi? We are all missing Tarawi. But inshallah. We'll make up for those lost good deeds. <clears throat> okay, Bismillah. So, Prophet Adam alayhi salam, he is our father. That's who we are going to talk about. Our great, 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 great grandfather, right? And there is, of course, a lot for us to learn from him. He is our great, 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 great grandfather. So, there's probably a lot of stuff we have in common with him. Not just our genes. So, Allah has made him an example for us. In like you will see so many lessons we learn from his story that go a uh, link with us in so many different aspects of our life. You will be amazed. Of course, we can't talk about everything, but inshallah, um, this is something we can keep reflecting on all our life and see how much we actually have in common with him. No wonder Allah made him the first human, the first example for us. Okay, so let's begin. Bismillah. So when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels that I am going to create a khalifa on earth, right? A khalifa on earth, Adam alayhi salam, human beings. The angels, what did they think? Were they like excited? <laughs> or were they like sad? And they got a little bit worried. They were worried. They saw the beautiful earth right they saw how wonderful it is and they were worried they had seen what the jinns had done before so they were worried that human beings are going to turn out like jinn and do a lot of harmful things on earth which we kind of did but um so they asked allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not like shaitan like no why allah why are you doing this no they asked allah I uh, to understand so they can better understand that uh, why I you know um, why is Allah action so then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them <laughs> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told them I know what you do not know right so now I'm sure a lot of the time kids are used to hearing that, right? You won't understand yet. So it's true, like sometimes, you know, adults know things that uh, maybe right now as kids, you don't have enough knowledge to be able to understand yet. Uh, and here, just we are talking about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows so much more than even your parents, right? So much more than anybody else in the world. So he tells them, I know what you do not know. And but actually later on, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala shows them something incredible. Something that tells them why Adam alayhi salam is or human beings are going to be khalifas on earth. What makes them so, so wonderful? What makes them so superior to other creations that Allah will tell them to prostrate to him? So Allah brought Adam alayhi salam and Allah taught Adam alayhi salam a lot of knowledge. He gave them so much knowledge. Allah taught him so many things. And Adam alayhi salam was a very good learner obviously. Like I hope you guys are too. <laughs> right? So he uh, learned all that and he uh, presented to Angels, so Allah asked him, tell them what these things are. And I, uh, Allah asked the angels first, and the angels said, we don't know. We only know what you have taught us, ya Allah. So they didn't have that much knowledge. And then Allah asked Adam, tell them what these things are. And Adam said, this is this, this is this, this is that. So Adam had super knowledge, right? So much knowledge. Adam alayhi salam. So then angels understood. 
that why Allah has chosen this creation, why Allah has created this creation, why we are going to be Khalifas on earth. Do you get it? What is it? Tell me in the comments. What, what did an angels understand? What was the answer there? What is it that makes us so special? What is it that makes us so superior to other creations? Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told, actually he told other creation, uh, 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 we know Allah told angels to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam. But Allah also tells us in the Quran that he made everything in the universe subservient to us, like they are serving us. So you are like the Khalifa over them, like the sun. Doesn't the sun do something for you? Doesn't the moon do something for you? Doesn't the wind do something for you? Yeah, everything, right? Everything on earth, the trees, the mountains, the grass, right? Even cockroach. Yeah. <laughs> Even cockroaches do something for us. Can anybody tell me what do cockroaches do for us? Tell me in the comments. What do cockroaches do for us? Okay. Uh, Asad said we learn easily. Good. Very good. Right. It is our ability to learn. Right. It is our ability to learn that makes us so superior, so much better than other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But why? Why is ability to learn so special? What's so what's so good about that? Yeah, very good, Saad. Saad said cockroaches clean. <laughs> yeah, cockroaches are like natural cleaners that Allah created. They come where do cockroaches come? Cockroaches come where there's filth, right? They come and they eat up all the filth. So even cockroaches are doing good, right? We just need to make sure there's no filth if you don't want cockroaches. Anyways, so um, coming back to learning ability. Why, why is learning abilities like, why is that that makes us so superior? Why is that so great thing to have? Isn't muscle power better? <laughs> what about other abilities? Why is the ability to learn so special why is knowledge our ability to learn uh, our intellect so important why is it so special sure we can you know we said we can learn it better than others right that uh, humans intellect was higher and that's what makes them the best of Allah's creation but I'm asking you why what's so special about this quality Tell me in the comments. Let me just open the comments on my computer too so I don't miss any. Walaikum assalam, Salma. Why, what's so special about the quality to learn? Ability to learn. <laughs> Anybody, come on. Use your ability to think. To give you the answer to help other people. Very good, right? So how is that linked? The more you, the more uh, knowledge is power. How is it power? Actually, let's say, let's say that you find a bird fallen down on the street and the bird has a beak. But the beak is broken. And it can't eat because his beak is broken. What would you do? Maybe bring the bird in the house, right? Maybe try to feed it. But you can't feed it, you know, all the time that it needs to be fed. And the bird wants to go out and fly. What would you do? Actually, this really happened. So there were some naughty kids. And they... Um, you know, they were really mean. And they went and they, um, you know, um, hurt this bird um, in a really bad way. And so the bird actually broke its beak because of that. Later on, some other people found this bird on, lying on the street and its beak was broken. So they took, him, took the bird home 
uh, or you know wherever and then they try to feed it for a little while but you know in the end you have to let the bird fly um, and live on its own you can't be always be there to feed it so they use their power of intellect their intelligence their ability to learn and they went and started researching about it they learned about it and they came up with an idea they actually build a beak using a 3d printer <laughs> right so they used a 3d printer to print a beak for this bird and they you know of course use their knowledge to attach it as well so because they had the, uh, you know alhamdulillah they went and they learned they were actually able to help this bird the more you learn the more knowledge you get the more you will be able to do good in this world the less knowledge you have the less you will be able to do you're like uh how can i help what can i do you will just be thinking about that you won't even know what you can do to help. How do you go about helping, right? So the more you learn, the greater will be your power to help other people. Also, wouldn't it help you come closer to Allah? The more knowledge you have of Allah, who Allah is, of the Quran, of the Hadith, wouldn't you be closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? Wouldn't you be a stronger Muslim? more power to avoid temptations right or how to overcome bad habits all that it's all dependent on how much knowledge we have isn't it that's why knowledge is power right but like anything if you just store it like i have all this knowledge it's in my hard disk <laughs> right today alhamdulillah we have access to so much knowledge so we don't want our brains to become hard disks right and just storing there <laughs> so we have to put it into action right so Allah has given us this incredible potential incredible capacity your ability to have knowledge is much greater than any hard disk one terabyte hard disk <laughs> that you can store much more than that in your head but what good is a hard disk if it can't benefit it in any way right it like it's like a corrupted hard disk of brain <laughs> if you're not using it in any way so Allah didn't give us all you know this ability to store all this knowledge so we can just you know learn and just keep storing Allah wants Allah gave us the responsibility to learn and then use that knowledge right Allah gave us the ability to learn so first we must keep learning keep learning keep learning filling up filling up our head with more and more and more knowledge and we must keep applying that knowledge too right Allah, Allah is blessed with so much so many blessings right like food water family and uh, ramadan <laughs> so many things we can just keep counting electricity internet water and you know all the good food you'll be eating in ramadan hand sanitizers these days <laughs> okay but uh, out of all of the blessings allah gave us when angels asked allah why is Allah creating human beings? What did Allah show them? Which ability of human beings did Allah show them? Their ability to learn. Right? And then also we know in the first surah that was revealed. What was the first surah that was revealed? Surah Alaq. In that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us what? He says that it's like Allah introducing himself to us isn't it this is the first surah revealed first time Allah was at uh, you know revealing the message to prophet Muhammad Sallallahu so he told us what that uh, read read in the name of your Lord who created so he tells us that he created us he's a creator right then he tells us that he is most merciful 
right? So he doesn't tell us that I will be the one judging you. No. He, the first thing he tells us uh, about himself, like the second thing he tells us about himself, is he is most merciful. Right? This is your Rab, who's most merciful. He created you, is most merciful. And then he gives us an example of his mercy. Now, if Allah has to give an example of his mercy, which one do you think he will pick? Out of all the blessings he has given you, when he has to give you an example for the first time of the blessing he has given you, what's the first example he picks? Surah Rahman is filled with examples, right? But which one is the first one he picked? He said, he taught man the use of pen. Taught man what he did not know. So the first example Allah is giving us here is our ability to learn. Right? And we know pen has like massively helped us learn. Before 100 years ago, it was, you know, maybe not 100 years ago, maybe even before that, right? It was much harder for people to learn. They weren't like a lot of printed books. But now, especially with internet, we can learn like everything is on our fingertips, right? Just open up, you have the entire Quran, open up your hadith, you know, open up, you can learn about 3D printers, <laughs> right? So easy. You can learn about anything. But not every knowledge is actually even knowledge, right? If I am spending hours and hours learning about cheats and games, and how to play this game, how to do that game, Wikipedia about this game and that game, or Wikipedia about like some random stuff, or what is Taylor Swift doing right now? <laughs> is that knowledge? <laughs> I don't think so. All right? So our responsibility is that Allah has given you this gift. If you are grateful for this gift, this ability to learn, then you will use it in the right way. Right? by actually using it to be expand and like to use it to uh, learn knowledge that benefits you right and then we will apply that knowledge to help others um, if you really want to be a superhero in this world then you got to be using your superpower does ever a superhero become a superhero without using his power superpower I don't think so Right? What kind of a superhero would that be? So you can be a superhero when you use your superpower. And your superpower is what? Your ability to learn. Am I right? Yeah. And if you're not using that ability to learn, then of course, how are you going to help people? You're only going to be able to do so much. If you want to do that much and even more, you got to be learning expanding your ability to learn and you know what right now is such a good time to increase this ability to learn because right now there's not much else you can do <laughs> right they can't go out for soccer games you can't like you know not really um, and you can't you know do, there are lots of things you can't do right now so we have more time to invest in learning right now and increasing our knowledge right now so focus on that and then inshallah after a month when you come out of Ramadan you are going to be so much more powerful right and then you need to apply that knowledge don't become like a hard disk I have all this knowledge in my head <laughs> use it to do good and you will be able to do so much go more good in the world inshallah okay then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told the angels to prostrate to Adam alayhi salam can anybody tell me why why did Allah tell the angels to prostrate? Allah told him to prostrate as this was a... Told them to prostrate, sorry, because it was a sign that they are all going to now serve human beings. Does shaitan also serve human beings in some way? We know angels too, they do a lot of things for us. What about shaitan, Iblis? Yeah, even he plays a very important role in our life, isn't he? He's playing a very important role in your life. He's actually indirectly helping you go to Jannah. <laughs> right? Because every time he comes to you and says, do that.
the rewards you for it, right? Whenever you have a bad thought, like, mm, maybe I will do this. And maybe I will hit that person or do that bad thing. But you don't. Allah will reward you for it, right? When you when he tries really hard to tempt you and you resist it, Allah will reward you for it, right? So even Iblis, even Shaitan is playing a very important part in helping you come to Jannah. Um, okay, then what happened? So we know that Iblis refused to prostrate to Adam a.s. He said, I am better than him, right? He said, I am better than him. And he did not prostrate to Adam a.s. Um, I just realized I should have had a cup of water here. <laughs> you know, I'm feeling really thirsty now. How are you guys going? Let me know in the comments. Have you enjoyed the session so far? Let me know. How are you going? <clears throat> okay, so Adam alayhi salam. Sorry, um, Iblis said, I know be I'm, I'm better than him. And I will not prostrate to him. You made him from mud and you made him from... Uh, uh, sorry, you made him from mud and you made me from fire. First of all, bad logic. Alright? Even his logic is not good. Because it's mud better than fire, fire better than mud. How do you know? Right? A lot of things mud can do that fire can't. Right? Like, mud can put out fire. <laughs> so, you don't, you can apply mud on your face to look pretty. Actually, yeah, people have mud face masks. <laughs> it's a beauty product. People make mud houses. I don't think anybody wants to live in mud fire house. <laughs> That sounds like hellfire. Um, anyways. So, uh, even his logic wasn't good. He doesn't have as much knowledge as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But he became so jealous. He became so envious. That uh, he's just, you know, using any kind of flawed logic and arguing with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Who had blessed Iblis with so much. So much that Allah had advanced him to place him amongst the angels. And now he's like, why? Well, how could somebody be better than me? Right? I am first. I am the best. How can somebody be better than me? No. So then, he now makes his mission to destroy not just Adam a.s. But all of his children. Right? All of his children. Including you and me. But you know what? Even Iblis knew that there are going to be some people he's not going to be able to have any power over. And I hope you are one of them. So even when he said to Allah that I will go and, you know, I'm going to go and make them ungrateful to you. He said, I'll make them ungrateful to you, except of you. Even he knew he can't do that to everybody. So if you are like really, really grateful to Allah, inshallah, shaitan will not be able to take you away from that. Take you away from Jannah. And remember, is Allah on your side? Yes. Allah is on your side. Does Allah want to see you in Jannah? Absolutely. Allah wants you in Jannah. Right? Allah wants you in Jannah, in the highest level of Jannah. That's what Allah wants for you. Allah says so in the Quran. What will Allah get from punishing you? Allah doesn't want to punish you. He wants to see you in Jannah. Right? So, you Allah, you have Allah on your side. And, and one more thing we should reflect on is actually Shaitan didn't just say, I will make them disbelieve in you. He didn't say that. Does Shaitan believe in Allah? Yeah, he knows Allah, right? He knows Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He knows Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu So he doesn't doubt Allah exists or like a lot of human beings do. But is he grateful to Allah? Is Iblis grateful to Allah? No. So he knows, he, and he knows like that he's ungrateful and that's a big sin. So he promised Allah he, that this is what, this is what his challenge is to us. That he will make us ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. 
ungrateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So if you, the one thing you really work hard on is I am going to be very, very grateful to Allah at all times in my life, you will inshallah be safe. Work on that. Make that your goal. No matter what, I'm going to be a grateful person. That's your expressway to Jannah. <laughs> right? So being grateful means, of course, you know, thanking Allah. But it also means like seeing one of the things I need to be thankful for. Like often when I ask people, like, oh, kids, what, what are you thankful for? Food, water, money, food, water, home, family. <laughs> No, think of every day, every day Allah is blessing with you some something, right? Oh, that Xbox, you know, two hours I played today. That delicious meal mom made today. We played Ludo, uh, you know, car like somebody was telling me, we played Ludo or Carom Board or we played Dominoes or Monopoly as a family. Thank Allah for that, right? Thank Allah for your uh, room. Thank Allah for your, um, you know, uh, family. By, uh, you know, not just thank Allah with your words, but with your actions. Right? Uh, so, thank Allah with your actions. So, that means not complaining too much. Right? Uh, why can't I go out? Why can't I do this? Oh, I'm bored. My friend has this. I don't have that. Right? Is that being grateful? Complaining? No. That means Shaitan is winning over you. Right? You don't want to be amongst those people Shaitan is winning over. Right? So we want to be amongst the people that Shaitan can't win over. And he knows he can't win over some people. So we want to be amongst those people. So... Um, we, that means complaining less about things and being more grateful for what Allah has given us and um, and showing that gratitude when we are doing our salah like if somebody is grateful to Allah I think they would be rushing to their salah isn't it they're not gonna be like throw it again no like Allah who gave me so much I will rush to Salah, right? So that's how, inshallah, we can be amongst grateful people. Some examples of that. Okay. Then, so Iblis, um, we talk about Iblis, and then we know that, actually, what else did he do? He made dua to Allah. Iblis made dua to Allah. <laughs> after he's challenging Allah like that, right? He's like, I'm not going to prostrate. And then he said, it's like, you know, your mom and dad, they found out that you were in, you know, you broke something and they call you, right? And Osad's watching, he told me, like, I can see his name, so I'm going to take his name. <laughs> like his mom calls him, Saad, come here. Saad's like, what did mom find out? <laughs> And Saad goes into the room, right? And you know, mom, dad found out about something horrible you have done. And then you say, then you can see that they're very angry. Right? You can see they're really angry with their face. And then you say, mom, can I have an ice cream? <laughs> or dad, can I get $10? What are they going to say to you? Will they give it to you at that point? I don't think so. <laughs> But here, what happens? Allah, uh, I'm sorry, Iblis has just disobeyed Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He's been so arrogant. And then what's the next thing he does? Makes dua to Allah. What does he ask for? He says, Ya Rabbi. He says, he calls Allah by his name Rabbi. Rabbi meaning the one who's looking after everybody. That let me live till the day of judgment. Give me respite till the day of judgment. He asked for something so huge. How could he dare to ask Allah after he had just been so arrogant? How did he even dare to do that? What is it that he knew that even at that time he could dare to make dua? He has knowledge of something. You know what that is? 
he knew Allah is Ar Rahman. Right? And Allah always answers du'as. So he asked Allah and he made dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Because he knew Allah will always answer du'as. Now, if he was really smart, what should he have done? Asked for forgiveness at that point. But he didn't. Why? Because that would mean that now he has to prostrate to Adam. And he still doesn't want to do that. No way, right? So that's why he did not ask for forgiveness. Because he's still arrogant. He's still jealous. And he can't get over it. So he's just like going to, uh, you know, determine in his mission. He's angry now. And he blames Allah instead. But why did you give Adam this favor? He wished that everything would be prostrating to him. So he's now blaming Allah. Did he make sin? Did he make an excuse? Yeah, I'm better, so I'm not going to do it. So he blames. He makes excuses. <clears throat> but Allah, of course, answered his dua. Why did Allah answer his dua? Of course, as we said, Allah is a Rahman. Allah is al Mujib. A lot of the time, we start thinking, "Oh, I'm so bad." I don't always pray. I don't always do this and do that. Allah will not answer my dua. <laughs> but that's not true. That's not true. Allah will always answer your dua. Allah doesn't like the people who doesn't make dua. Allah loves it when you make dua. So make a lot of dua. And we are in Ramadan. We should be making many, much, many, many more duas. Okay. So then... Um, then... Iblis, Allah answered his da, and we know what his envy. Then he, uh, Allah sends, you know, uh, Adam alayhi salam is living in Jannah, right? And in Jannah, we know that Allah told him not to eat from one tree, right? One tree. And we know that what happened. But inshallah, I think we will talk more about this uh, other half of the story tomorrow. Because uh, there are more different lessons in there for us. More about um, um, why did Adam alayhi salam eat from the tree? Why did he forget? Was there something behind his intention for eating from the tree? And then another question I have is, why did Allah not just send him to earth earlier? Why did Allah keep him in Jannah? Because earth was meant for us, isn't it? It was our destiny to come and live on earth and be tested here. So why did Allah keep him on heaven for a while? So all that we are going to discuss tomorrow. <laughs> Inshallah. And uh, we'll talk more about the story of Adam and Islam and finish that tomorrow. And we'll go on to the next prophet on Sunday, I think. I hope you enjoyed and you benefited. If you did, please share the video and join me tomorrow. Tomorrow, I will probably join a bit later, maybe 11 o'clock um, Australia time. This is 10 o'clock now in Australia. It's an hour later. Um, and inshallah, if you benefited, join me again tomorrow. I will do each one story of a prophet every day. And... Um, yeah, see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum.